This is Dr. Joshua Cooper, and I created this presentation because I've been getting a lot of questions about the iPhone 12 and implanted defibrillators. For those who want a quick answer about the interaction between the two, I'm going to actually start up front with an explanation. For those who want a little more detail about defibrillators and how the magnetic switch works, I'll continue in my presentation to explain in a little more detail. Here's the letter to the editor that generated all the concern and questions. The authors describe that when an iPhone 12 is placed against the skin in the upper chest over an implanted defibrillator, the defibrillator can be deactivated and will not deliver life-saving treatment if an arrhythmia requires it. They go on to say that the reason for the interaction is that there is a circular array of magnets in the iPhone 12 that's not found in previous generations of iPhone or other conventional smartphones, and that's the reason for the interaction with this specific model. Let's go on to describe exactly why this interaction occurs. An implantable defibrillator is an electronic device that is surgically implanted under the skin, and it uses one to three wires to interact with the heart. The purpose of the defibrillator is to deliver a life-saving treatment, usually a shock, to restore the heart to normal rhythm if it should go into a life-threatening fast heartbeat. Defibrillators are manufactured with a magnetic off switch inside of them. It's located in the generator itself, and there's a couple different kinds, but what they have in common is that if a powerful magnet is brought right against the skin on top of the generator, it will turn off the device therapies, meaning the defibrillator will not be able to see what the heart rhythm is doing and it will not deliver a shock while the magnet is in place. But if the magnet is removed, that switch flips back to on and the defibrillator goes back exactly to the same settings that it had before the magnet was brought in place. The exact same thing happens if anything that contains a powerful magnet is brought over the device against the skin, including the iPhone 12. When a magnet is in place, the magnetic switch is flipped to off, and when the device is removed, the defibrillator goes back on exactly the way it was before. No harm comes to the defibrillator, there is no permanent change done, it is simply an interaction that occurs while the device containing a magnet is against the skin in very close proximity to the defibrillator itself. This is not a new phenomenon at all. Here's an article from 2007 that described how items worn around the neck and chest near a defibrillator that contain small neodymium magnets can interact with the defibrillator and deactivate it temporarily. That included powerful magnetic necklaces, name tags that have a magnetic clasp, and other such items. Here's an article from 2009 that described the same phenomenon with portable headphones. If headphones are draped around the neck and sit overlying the defibrillator, they could also interact with the defibrillator and thereby deactivate it. More recently, fitness trackers have been added to the list as well because they can contain powerful magnets located in the strap or band. In addition, there's a case report of an electronic cigarette that contained a powerful magnet that also was able to deactivate temporarily an implanted defibrillator. For those who want to know a little bit more, let me describe why we put in defibrillators and how they work. Here's the normal heartbeat, where the top and bottom chambers pump one at a time in sequence. They go slower when you're at rest and faster when you're active. Ventricular tachycardia is a rapid rhythm in the bottom pumping half of the heart that can happen in people who have various types of heart disease, including previous heart attacks and other heart conditions. Ventricular fibrillation is an extremely rapid chaotic pattern in the bottom pumping chambers where they really can do no meaningful pumping at all because they're just simply going so fast. In the latter two scenarios, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation, a person could potentially pass out and this is known as a cardiac arrest. If the rhythm does not stop on its own, then someone needs to quickly jump in, start CPR, call 911, and have an electric shock delivered to the heart as soon as possible to restore it to a normal rhythm. So what can an implanted defibrillator do if the bottom pumping chambers are beating so fast that it could be life-threatening? Well, an implanted defibrillator can use its wires to detect what the rhythm is doing, and it can deliver an electrical treatment to kickstart the bottom chambers back to normal. That treatment could potentially be either a rapid pacing treatment, or it could be an electrical shock. 
So how does an implanted defibrillator even know what the heart's doing to decide whether it needs to deliver an electrical treatment? Let's first review the normal heartbeat from the perspective of an implanted defibrillator. Here's that normal heartbeat beating in the top and bottom in sequence, and here are actual electrical signals that are delivered to a defibrillator so it can see what the heart is doing. Notice in blue we see signals in the top part of the heart and in purple in the bottom, and you can see the top-bottom sequence one at a time that tell the defibrillator that the heart's in normal rhythm. Here's ventricular tachycardia, and here are those same signals delivered to the defibrillator. And here we can see the top chambers are going in a slow, regular pattern, but the bottom chamber here in purple is going really fast. And this is how the defibrillator knows that ventricular tachycardia is occurring. And here's what ventricular fibrillation would look like, where the bottom chambers are going extraordinarily rapidly in a chaotic pattern, as seen here in purple, while the top half of the heart remains in its normal rhythm. Now the situation isn't always perfect. The defibrillator is terrific at picking up little electrical signals that come from the heart itself, but that means it's also really good at picking up electrical signals that may come from other sources. If the defibrillator sees signals that aren't from the heart, it could be fooled into thinking the heart is in a rhythm that actually isn't occurring, and it could deliver an electrical treatment that wasn't necessary. For example, in the operating room, a surgeon may use an electric scalpel on the body in order to do the surgery. While the electrical signals from the scalpel are being delivered, the defibrillator may pick that up, and it may think that that's actually coming from the heart itself. Here's an example of that, where we can actually see the normal heartbeat continuing through this tracing. But on top of that, there are all these other little signals that are coming from an electric cautery. In that situation, if the defibrillator remains on, it could accidentally deliver a shock that wasn't needed in the middle of a surgery, even while the heart is in its normal rhythm. Another situation where the defibrillator could be fooled into delivering a treatment that wasn't necessary can occur if the defibrillator wire gets broken. We call it a defibrillator lead or wire, but actually it isn't a single metal wire that runs down the length. If you cut across the defibrillator wire, you'll see that there are actually bundles of many wires that run along its length. And if one of those little fibers gets broken, for example, one of the wires here in this coil or tangle of wires that runs down the length, then the two little metal ends can scratch against each other and generate little electrical signals that the defibrillator could see and again think that it's the heart. Here's an example of a broken wire creating abnormal signals that are detected by the defibrillator. Again, here you can see the normal heartbeat going right through this tracing, but there are lots of extra little signals there that are not from the heart, and it's from a broken strand of wire within the lead that's generating little electrical signals that the defibrillator sees, but actually does not indicate a true rhythm. If the defibrillator can't tell the difference between the real and the false electrical signals, then it again could deliver an electrical shock that wasn't necessary. The reason that there's a magnetic off switch built into all defibrillators is to allow us the rapid ability to turn off the shock function if we're in a situation where we don't want the defibrillator to deliver shocks to the patient. The magnetic switch by default will allow the defibrillator to function as it's programmed, but if we place a powerful magnet over top, it'll flip the switch and it'll turn off shock therapies while the magnet is in place. When the magnet is removed, the defibrillator turns back on and goes immediately back to the settings that it had before. We can also do this manually if we grab a program or a special computer that can communicate and change the settings in a defibrillator, but that isn't always immediately available. So the magnetic off switch is a safety device that allows anybody, even without a programmer nearby, to quickly turn off shock treatments if they're not necessary. For example, during a surgery where electrocautery is planned, instead of having somebody come and reprogram the defibrillator right before and then program it back the way it was right after surgery, the anesthesiologist or surgeon can place a powerful magnet over the defibrillator right before cautery is to be used. Electrocautery can be used without any problem whatsoever because the defibrillator is deactivated. And then immediately after surgery, the magnet can be removed 
the defibrillator returns to normal and the patient can go to recovery. Another more urgent scenario where that magnetic off switch can be really important is in an emergency situation where a patient presents with one or multiple defibrillator shocks, but they didn't pass out, didn't feel a racing heart, and they're not having any arrhythmia. In that rare situation where a defibrillator lead is broken and rapid electrical signals are delivered to the defibrillator, it keeps thinking that the heart is in a rapid life-threatening rhythm and it can deliver shock after shock even while the patient is awake and feeling the pain associated with each shock. The healthcare provider can rapidly grab a magnet and disable the defibrillator and the patient is now safe under medical care without arrhythmias and without receiving further unnecessary shocks. The magnet can be taped against the skin over the defibrillator in place while the electrophysiologist is called, they can come and reprogram the defibrillator and start initiating a plan to fix the wire and the defibrillator system so it functions properly. So here are the lessons that I would like you to take away from this video presentation. Implanted defibrillators are put in patients who have had or are at risk for life-threatening fast heart rhythms, and the defibrillator is supposed to identify that fast rhythm and deliver an automatic electrical treatment, like a shock, in order to kickstart the heart back to normal. But there are situations where a defibrillator may see other electrical signals and give an inappropriate shock even though the heart is really not in a life-threatening rhythm at the time. And that's the reason that defibrillators have been manufactured with a magnetic safety off switch in order to at any time disable shock function in order to prevent unnecessary shocks from occurring. When you remove a magnet from on top of the defibrillator, it goes back to the previous settings and restores its normal function. Any strong magnet can do this, including the one in the iPhone 12 and also magnetic jewelry and some earphones. And when these magnets are placed against the skin overlying the defibrillator, while it's in place, the defibrillator could be disabled from delivering shock treatments. And as soon as the, the magnet is removed from the skin and the defibrillator, the treatments return to normal. So the advice is to not store your iPhone or anything that contains a magnet in a pocket or around the neck so that the magnet is in close proximity to the defibrillator. As long as you keep the magnet away, there's no problem whatsoever and your defibrillator is safe. Thank you so much for watching and I really do hope that this video helps ease any concerns that you may have had if you have a defibrillator or if you have a loved one with a defibrillator when you heard the news items that the iPhone 12 could potentially cause a life-threatening interaction with implanted defibrillators. It is not at all an issue that the defibrillator could become harmed or damaged in any way. It simply is the fact that when a powerful magnet is placed immediately against the skin next to the defibrillator, while that is in place, the defibrillator will not be able to function as intended. Simply moving it away will restore normal defibrillator function and you don't really need to check with your doctor or anyone to make sure that the defibrillator is okay. So don't put magnets or your iPhone 12 in your breast pocket over the defibrillator and if it should happen accidentally, just move it away and no harm is done.